Hey everybody, today we're looking at RetroSend. Specifically, we're looking at the wavetable functionality of it. Now, this is one of those cool synthesis types which relies on essentially what you think of as a series of small little waveforms which then we can manipulate and modulate. But it comes from a little file. You can either create these or there's defaults that come with it. But I don't want to get too deep into the actual math behind RetroSynth and Wavetable. But I do want to look at one cool way to create your own tables. And so this is kind of that really do-it-yourself type thing. Now, the idea here is to take a non-Wavetable or non-typical Wavetable file and use it and manipulate it inside. So I've got this beginning of a song track here. Doesn't sound anything like what it's going to end up sounding, but I thought it'd be interesting with the read type sounds. I'll play a little bit. Okay, so that's the original source file. And I put the whole song, I just loaded that in here. So you can do that right here where you can actually come through and create a wavetable from an audio file. Now there's one other important step with this and that's down here with the little arrow at the bottom where you can see the audio file analysis type. Now we're doing just normal for this, but you can do highly relaxed or any of them. And the more prepared the file is as an actual wavetable, you'll want to make this more highly selective. If it's more like a song like this, then we can do what we're doing here with a normal or above. And you end up with all these little wave shapes that are now put in order here, and we can move this knob to go through them. So all kinds of cool sounds that are coming out of that. And then what I'm doing here is using essentially a sample and hold function from the modulator effect to control this randomly, but in a tempo. Now, it wouldn't be good to do like chords with this because there's already, you know, polyphony happening inside the actual original wavetables. You can hear you can have a lot of discord there. However, this is great in this case as kind of a, a loop that you're putting underneath other parts of your track. So I've taken that full song, brought it in as a custom table had it analyze it relatively relaxed manner, use the modulator here to then control the wave shape. So again, just as a reminder, I went in here to learn plugin parameter with this on the same channel strip. And once I said learn, I just touched this knob and it started moving in sync with my timing settings here. And then I can just record this into a track and we could use this with other parts. So let's do that real quick. So let's come in. I just want to add some strings to this or something else. You can see that we can now layer other parts and other things on top of that. So it's a great way to manipulate and really warp some of your sounds using some of the cool tools that are part of that synthesizer. So in addition to what we've already done, we do have a filter that's here. We have an LFO. We have some basic effects and other things which we can use 
in addition to what else we, whatever else we want out there to really manipulate this sound. So we have all these other synthesis tools right built into this that we can use. Okay, that's really what I want to showcase today, just the process of bringing your own audio file in as a custom table and then using some of the other tools around it to manipulate it. So kind of a cool process and something that's easy to create brand new sounds that you've never even thought of before and use them in a creative way. Hope you're having a great week and we'll do more of these videos soon.